Raise your hand. Raise your hand. And I know it. You are some, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, I wanted to really impress you because some of you are. No? All of you are really smart people. And you know what I like to do? I'm a magician. You know, I don't really do magic. What I do is I try to fool you. I try to make you think you see something that you don't. And I know that you're smart people. And so I didn't know how on earth I was going to be able to fool a bunch of smart people like you until I thought I know what it is. It's going to be my guaranteed rope. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I come from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm all the way across the Mississippi River. I'm in the western part of the United States. But I came here to Killian Hills. Is that right, Killian? To see some Killian Hillians. to show you the one, the only guaranteed rope now, this side of the Mississippi River. Ladies and gentlemen, when I first got my guaranteed rope, I pulled it out of the guaranteed rope box. I looked at the instructions and it said, this rope is guaranteed to always have two ends and one middle. I didn't believe it at first, just as I know that you don't believe it. But I figured I would look at it very closely. I checked out the rope. It had one end at one end. It had the other end at the other end. And so that meant two. I figured it doesn't always have to be two. And so this is what I did. I took one of those ends. Now remember, how many ends are there? I took one of those ends and I cut it off. But ladies and gentlemen, this is going to amaze you. When I counted those ends again, and, and you go ahead and fan us. How about the, uh, the one, two, three table back, the guy on the end? The guy on the very end. Uh, the guy sitting next to the lady in the blue. The guy with the brown shirt and the stripes. And the guy named Jordan. Come right on over here. Come up the steps. Oh, you, oh, that's so good. You know, Jordan, it's warm up here. I'll have to warn you about that. I've got sort of stuck there. Doesn't that feel good? Oh, that feels good. But if you'll go ahead and fan us, I would appreciate it. Now, what we're going to do, man, is shake the hand of I'm Mr. Gill to her, I'm Grandpa Gill to oh, but I'm Mr. Jordan. And uh, oh, it's so good to meet you, Jordan. Jordan is going to be working with me on some magic. It's good to meet you, Jordan. And uh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline's going to be working with me on some magic. Did you get it fixed? What I want you to do, Jacqueline, was to take it like this. You can be president of my fan club. Chinese linking rings this morning. Jordan, may I teach you how to do the red linking rings this morning? Okay, Jordan and Jacqueline. This is the ancient illusion of the linking rings. Many, many years ago, the magician would take eight sides.
solid bands made of steel would link them together, take them apart, put them together. It would be like steel passing through steel. And it amazed all the time. And so I'd like to teach you two how to do it, and then you can teach the rest of them. Is that all right? Okay, now, the most important thing is don't stand in front of the audience. All right, stand right there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have to be able to count to three, and it goes like this, okay? It goes one. Can you count with me? Do you know how to count to three? Do you know how to count to three? Good, I got some good ones up here. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Three brings two rings together. Jordan, would you like to know how to do one in each hand, just like this, all right? You start circling them around. And, and carefully, if you can, bring them farther and farther and farther and farther and farther and farther. And farther. Farther and farther and farther apart. Uh, <laughs> I see what she's doing. You know what? She was a quarter of an inch to having it done and she stopped. Can you imagine that? Let me give her some special attention. Would you go ahead and take those apart if you'd like to? Now, what you do is you take your hand and you hold the palm up like this. You put it through the ring, just like this. I'm going to give you your ring. You've got my ring. That's how they come apart. Isn't that nice? It works. Give her a hand. Right. So you go ahead and, and put those two together. And I think three is a little bit too much for you, but you'll work on two, is, have you ever seen, have you ever been up to North Georgia or over there, George, toward the Smoky Mountains? And seen, have, you, have you ever seen, have you ever seen the, the waterfalls? This is what a North Georgia waterfalls looks like. Watch this. Gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. Gurgle, 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 down it goes. See those bubbles go. Well, you know, there's a lot of things. If you have four, four rings put together, you can make a world. You can make a football, huh? You can make a flower that opens up in the springtime. The interesting thing about a ring... Would you hold this for me for a minute? The interesting thing about a ring is that it has no end, does it? And that's the way God makes you and me. He makes us with eternal souls that are going to live to forever. Now, when, when things happen and we get trapped, and, and sometimes, sometimes we get caught in a situation that it can't, we can't get out of, like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they sin, and sin became part of their life. May I have two of them? Good. And if we, if we aren't careful, one thing leads to another, and when we start doing bad stuff, it just keeps happening over and over and over again. If I have one more, maybe some of us can think of things that this might stand for. Something that we do wrong sometimes and we're sorry for. Now, don't raise your hand. I just want to talk to you. And, and what has happened is that it's gotten caught in our lives and we just can't get out of it. But I want you to know that the Lord Jesus came to this world. And he... George, would you hold those two? Jacqueline, would you hold these two? When the Lord died on the cross for you and for me, 
And when he died, he paid for our sins. And the Bible says that even though we still do things that are wrong, we're covered in Jesus' righteousness. That is, Jesus covers us up so that God doesn't even see the wrong that we have done. And we've asked him to forgive us. And the eternal soul that you and I have, that's going to live as long as God does, that eternal soul can be free from sin forever and forever because Jesus forgives us. Well, thank you very much for helping me. Now, I want you to remember that it's okay to tell the people out here how to do it, but don't tell anybody else, all right? Okay, thank you. May I shake it to you? Thank you, Jack. Thank you, George. They did a good job. Give them a hand. something that I have back here. Many years ago, there was a man by the name of Blackstone, he was a magician, back in the 1900s, the early 1900s, and he invented what he called a dollhouse. It has front doors that every Sunday people would come and they would go to church. Of course, it's empty today because this is Tuesday and it's uh, voting day. And so people aren't able to, people don't go to church today, maybe, or at least not right now. Or at least there's none here right now. No people. But what I did was, over here on the eastern side, I put a beautiful stained glass window. And when people go to church, they can know that they can sit there and see the beautiful light that God sends through the stained glass window and enjoy all the things that, just thinking about all the things that God does back here on the back side, is the door to the fellowship hall. That's where we have all the good dinners. Have you ever been to a church dinner? All oh, the food usually is really, really, really good. Okay, thank you. The macaroni and cheese and the beef and the chicken and a little bit of everything, sometimes barbecue. And then over here on the side, I put another stained glass window. And then she look to the front of the church. We've got the doors. On Sunday, the people come and they go to church. And most important is that there's a Bible so that we can learn. We can learn about the Lord Jesus and we can learn about God. And the Bible is very, very important in the church because we go to church to worship God, and we go to church to learn about God so that we know how to worship Him better. I don't know whether I mentioned it to you. On this little dollhouse, I made it out of a church by putting a steeple there. Put a stained glass window on the eastern side. On the back one, on the back here, is a door in which you can go into the fellowship hall. And there you can get all sorts of meals. Everybody brings a little bit of something. And when it gets all together, it's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. On the western side is another stained glass window that in the afternoon and the evening you can see the sun coming through. And it's a beautiful sight. But the most important thing is when you come and you open the doors. And all of God's people get together. And when they get together, they sing. Because as you can see, and oh, there's something special about God's people when, when we're singing. When we sing some of the old songs and some of the new songs, 
and some of them are on song sheets, some of them are in hymn books, and some of them are up there on the screen. We can sing and show God how much we love Him. Everybody needs to remember that the church is a very important place to go because the church is the family of God, the body of Christ. I don't know whether I mentioned to you, but I made this church. It has a, a steeple like that. And over here is a stained glass window. It's made for high water. That's why you can see all the way under it. And in the back here is the door to the fellowship hall. Oh, there are some good desserts that come from fellowship dinners. There are pieces of pie and cake and banana pudding. <laughs> and it's really, really good. On the western side is the stained glass window that the wind, that the light comes in in the afternoon. But have any of you ever heard that great old poem? Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Do you know it? Yes. Open the door. You can sing, you can read the Bible, but the most important thing...